How to Create a Giddy Organization in Jenkins. Now, a lot of times our Git servers are already set up for us, or you might even be using a cloud-based service such as GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. But sometimes you need to self-manage your own Git server. There are a few options, and the one that we're going to take a look at in this video is Giddy. If you're interested in learning more about Giddy, you can go out to the site at giddy.io. Now for this video, I have a Giddy server set up and I also have a Jenkins controller set up. If we take a look at the Giddy server, what you'll see is I have a Darren Pope organization and I also have two repositories in this organization. If we take a quick look at the repository, it's a really simple Jenkins file that is in the repository that's just gonna do an echo out. We don't need anything big for this video, but I do wanna show you one more thing. Under settings and webhooks, right now we don't have any webhooks set up. I'll go ahead and double check also for app two and with app two settings webhooks, we also don't have any webhooks set up. So at this point, we're ready to introduce our Jenkins controller. So if we go into our Jenkins controller and the version of Jenkins that I have running right now is 2.361.2, let's go into manage Jenkins and let's take a look at the plugin for Giddy. If we go under manage plugins, I've already gone ahead and installed the plugin ahead of time. If we take a look at the plugin, at the time of recording, it's the Giddy plugin version 1.4.4. Now next up, what we need to do is configure our Giddy plugin. So let's click on Manage Jenkins and click on Configure System. We'll scroll down to the Giddy section. We'll click on Add Giddy Server. We'll give it a name. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to name it Giddy. For the server URL, I'm going to give it the URL of the Giddy server. And in my case, that's Giddy colon 3000. Now watch what happens when I tab out of this field. Right now we see could not communicate with server. When I tab out of the field, we can see through the message there, Giddy version 1.17.3, that I was able to make an initial connection to the Giddy server. So now I'm confident that I know I'm talking to the right server. Now in my case, 1.17.3, I can go in down and take a look back at my Giddy server. And down in the footer, you can see Giddy version 1.17.3. So these two versions are the same. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want my Jenkins controller to manage the hooks for any of the jobs that we set up. So I'll go ahead and click on manage hooks. You can see that we need to add credentials in order to manage hooks, which sort of makes sense. Now, this user that's selected is not the user that I want to use, so I need to add a credential. And the credential type that we want to use is username with password. And I'm just going to use my username and the password that I have set up for that user on the Giddy server. I'm going to name this Giddy. Darren Pope and Giddy, Darren Pope. And click on Add, and let's select that credential that I just created. And what we can see here with this message, hook management will be performed as Darren Pope. So what happened when I selected that credential is it went out and checked, okay, is this a credential that I'm aware of? It is, great. Now it's telling me that the management is gonna be done using that user. Let's go ahead and click on Save. And now let's go ahead and create our organization job. So I'm going to click on new item. I'm going to give it the name of Darren Pope. Usually when I'm creating organization type jobs, I name it the same as whatever the organization is. And in this case, it's Darren Pope. Now let's go back over to our controller and let's select organization folder and click OK. Let's scroll down to repository sources, click on add and select Giddy organization. And from here, it, if you had set up multiple Giddy servers, you could select which one you want to use. Since I've only set up one, then I only have the single selection to choose from. For credentials, I'm going to select the same credentials that I set up to manage webhooks. And then for owner, I'm going to go ahead and type in the owner of the organization, which in this case, I want it to match whatever the organization is, which is Darren Pope. So I type that in there. I'm not going to make any other changes to any of the behaviors. And I'm also going to leave the project recognizer still set to Jenkins file. Because if you remember back over in our repositories, we have Jenkins files declared at the root of each repository. So let's go ahead and click on save. And then the organization is going to be scanned. As we're going through the scan, you'll see that it finds app one and then it's checking the branches. It finds a Jenkins file. We look for app two, we find a Jenkins file. So what we can see here at the final part of this is two repositories were processed. And now let's go ahead and click on Darren Pope that's up in the breadcrumb. That'll take us to the root of our job. We can see that the organization is defined here. We see our two repositories, app one and app two. 
Now these two jobs, App 1 and App 2, are actually multi-branch jobs. So if we click into App 1, we'll see the main branch is defined there. If we click into main branch, we'll see that the job ran the very first time, and it just says, hello world from App 1. Now let's go over and just verify everything is fine on App 2. Again, App 2 main, look at our console log, and again, hello world from App 2. Now let's go back over to Giddy and verify that our hooks were set up correctly. So if we go into App 2, click on Settings, click on Webhooks, you'll see that we have a webhook set up for Jenkins 8080 Giddy Webhook Post. And as the organization folder was being scanned, as it found repositories that had Jenkins files, the plugin then went and created the webhooks for us. So let's go back into App 2. Let's make a modification to our Jenkins file. So let's edit this file from App 2 on Tuesday. And if we scroll down, and click on Commit Changes, and we're committing directly to the main branch, what we expect is that the job for App 2 is going to run. So if we go back to App 2, click on Main, we can see that the webhook triggered a job build for number two. And if we go ahead and scroll down, what we'll see is that we have our message, Hello World from App 2 on Tuesday. But if we go back over to App 1 and click on Main, we're going to see that no jobs were triggered on App 1 because we didn't make any changes inside of App 1. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeast. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBeast TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBeast TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.